Singer Jewel went from living out of her car to landing a smash debut album with Pieces of You. She's since tackled film, TV, poetry, and motherhood. She joins me now to talk about her upcoming album and a cause that's close to her heart. Jewel, so great to have you here Thank today. You. You're working on a new album, and uh, I understand it's kind of a bookend to the Pieces of You debut album. Yeah. What's that mean? Uh, you know, it means quite a few things. Uh, one is it'll be similar in spirit to the first album. It'll be a folk record, I guess, at its heart. Um, there's really no genre attached to it. There's no singles. I'm not thinking of commerciality. Um, and I'm not going to a record label. It was really difficult to get in a creative space that I was in 20 years ago uh, because I didn't know anything about the business then. Like, I didn't know anything about genres, labels, singles, commerciality, none of that. You talked about the record label, and life has changed. The music industry has changed so much since you got your start. Yeah. I mean, what ways do you think it changed the most for you and just the industry in general? But I think it's going to cause a real reshuffling. Everybody's looking for a new way of doing things, and I'm in a really fortunate position where I actually have a fan base built up, and I can release records directly to them. Um, so depending on what your goals are, now as a mom, the one that's really affected me is I don't want to work like I used to. I don't want to tour and do promo the way I used to work on the road three months, on the road three months at a time. Um, so for me, I think without having a label, I can still release my record. I don't have to think about singles. It won't be have the impact that those records might have, but it lets me do what I love. It lets me have creative freedom, and it lets me be a mom. So I'm really excited. And like not putting it into that genre, because you've done country, you've done pop. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the sound like on this record? I mean, you mentioned folk, mm -hmm. but you're going a little bit back to that. Yeah, I'd say I'm a, you know, a full card is probably in my heart, but I grew up listening to Merle Haggard and Loretta Lynn as much as I did Joni Mitchell and, and Bob Dylan as much as I did the Beatles. So that's just in my DNA, and my first record, Pieces of You, had country songs on it with Don't. You're meant for me, honestly, as a country shuffle. Um, and then I also had kind of pop leanings from listening to great you know, melody writers like Paul McCartney. Um, and then I'm a lyricist, and I, I care deeply about social issues, so that's sort of the folky in me. So this has that. It's just that I don't have to have a label to make me define myself. Um, I think labels are a little bit behind realizing that fans don't actually care a lot about genres and definitions, but radio stations and labels have built themselves in very specific boxes to do business. But fans don't really care. They'll have a Johnny Cash record and a Ramones record, usually. They're going to have both. You're also working on it, going to be working on a new song, and mm -hmm. it goes back to home, and you're getting some fan involvement. With that, what's that all about? I understand it's part of the Rethink uh, organization. Yeah, I'm working with, um, on this Rethink initiative um, so that people can rethink public housing and what it means. More than two million people in America rely on public housing to provide a home for their families, and there are at least a half a million waiting for a safe place to live. I'm Jewel, and I'd like you to join me and rethink how public housing is supporting your community. You know, I was raised really broke. Um, for the good first part of my life was on a ranch in Alaska. So when you're poor on a ranch, it's much easier because the land takes care of you, it feeds you, and you're around beauty. Um, and then we moved to Anchorage. You know, we were in the projects, and you know, my best friend was living in the projects, and I lived at her house. And uh, there's a lot of stereotypes and a lot of shame. You know, everybody at school laughing at us, um, and you're very aware of what people think of you. And it was really interesting reading the research that the Rethink campaign did, realizing that 80% of Americans believe that people are entitled to safe housing, but 60% of Americans don't even want it in their neighborhood. So there's a real disconnect happening. I don't think people realize who's living in public housing, and it's really rewarding for me to be able to be a part of telling people, you know, who's living there. It's 40%, 42% children, 31% elderly, veterans, and you know, it's funny, it becomes sort of a, people think of it as a partisan issue, and it isn't, because you listen to anybody on, you look at conservative talk shows, radio shows, they're talking about we have to take care of our veterans, but what does that mean? There's a cost to that, and how are we going to take care of them? And, you know, I really love Gandhi's quote of, you can gauge a civilization by how well it cares for its weakest members, and what do we owe our weakest members, and how does that happen? And also learning that public housing isn't, you know, isn't a free ride. People pay rent. You know, the kids right. I grew up around, everybody was paying rent. They're paying their electricity bills. They're just at a disadvantage, and it helps moms get an education to put themselves through school to get back on their feet. Um, it helps disabled veterans get by on their, you know, their fixed incomes. It's really necessary, and it's important to humanize who lives there. So that's what we're doing. Well, yeah. During that time when you were growing up, what got you through those tough times? You know, it's such a process. You know, I remember when I was, you know, uh, at the projects with my friends, um, watching, you know, we were all shoplifting. We didn't like using food stamps. It was so embarrassing that we would rather steal, which we all justified, um, wrongly, of course. But I don't know, I felt like I was 
beating the odds or beating the man somehow. And it wasn't until I was 18 that I really realized shoplifting was just cheating myself. It meant I didn't have enough faith in myself that I didn't think I could earn that money. And so I really doubled my efforts to try and never let my hardships make me more bitter. I wanted them to make me more compassionate. Do you remember the moment when you actually said, okay, I made it? I don't think I ever felt secure or safe. Like, it took me a long time for it to sink in, you know? And I was always very conservative, thinking it was all going to disappear tomorrow. Um, but yeah, there were moments that were crazy. I think I remember singing Hands uh, at the Vatican for the Pope. And that was crazy. It was one of those moments where you're like, I wrote this while I was homeless about my hands are small, but they're mine, and what I do with them is my choice, that empowerment. And then there I was singing it for the Pope at the Vatican. It was pretty surreal. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in today, Thanks. Jewel. Singer-songwriter Jewel with the Rethink Campaign. For this and all things entertainment, stay with cbsnews.com.